Carolyn, the Princess of Wales, had been forcibly uh, exiled, as she saw it, to this house around, out near Windsor. And she was always welcome at Windsor with her parents-in-law. The king and queen, of course, loved her and received her, and she spent a lot of time with them. But, you know, the fun and the games were with her husband. Not that she, her husband was any delight in her life, but his society was very giddy, and she missed, she was not any part of it. She resented this terribly. And besides, he'd appointed Lady Jersey as her first lady-in-waiting to oversee her and watch out for her. Uh, Lady Jersey was another one of his grandmothers that he had uh, had an affair with many years before. She was a very attractive woman, I must say. But she resented it, too. She was exiled along with the princess. Oh, it was very uncomfortable for everybody. Well, finally, next year, in 1812, I guess it was, uh, Carolyn said, oh, to hell with it. I'm not staying here another minute. And she left England. She went back to Europe. <laughs> and there she became the most complete eccentric in history, it seems. Oh, my goodness, poor woman. Well, uh, this was shortly after, I, I think it was shortly after the Napoleonic finally defeat Waterloo and all of this had happened. And uh, Parisians, were, Europeans were celebrating in Paris, ball after ball taking place. And at one of these, she appeared, stripped to the waist. <laughs> what an impression she must have left. She was... She was, she was not exactly sylphan. And many of the young ladies went uh, nearly des uh, That was the fashion of the time. But on the Princess of Wales, it was maybe a little bit too outré. Some time later, she appeared at a hunt party. And of course, there were a lot of famous people, kings and so on there. And she rode up on her horse with her riding habit and her equerry. And she was wearing half a pumpkin strap to her head, you know, carved out in sort of a cup. She said, it keeps my head cool. Well, she needed a cool head, I guess. She didn't seem to keep one very long because she ended up in Italy sleeping with her coachman. Uh, well, I must say he was a handsome, hairy fellow, but still. Her friends said now, Her Highness is sleeping with her servants. Prince George, her husband, had been keeping a dossier on her spies, watching her every move. They were clicking away, or whatever they did then, reporting back all of the, every indiscretion imaginable, because George was lining it up for, to get rid of her. 